Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, demo that will be about community-driven knowledge about Python packages and we will talk about uh, recommendations that uh, TOT, the recommender system, provides and also uh, we will talk about uh, prescriptions concept and uh, what information we uh, keep in prescriptions and how they are used during the resolution process in cloud-based uh, resolver uh, that is TOT. Okay, so uh, just to recap, our mission is to help developers with application development and we would like to provide a way to help developers ship better software. What better means, it can mean uh, better when it comes to bugs, but also better performance, uh, uh, more secure software and uh, things like that. So uh, to support this idea, uh, we created a community-driven uh, database uh, that is in a form of YAML files and these YAML files are automatically consumed by the cloud-based uh, resolver and are used during the resolution process to adjust uh, the resolution of uh, Python packages so that uh, they uh, are well-performing, secure, bug-free or uh, there is provide, provided some additional information and additional guidance for uh, Python developers. So, uh, let's have a look at the current knowledge that is used during recommendations and what we provide to users. So, as of now, users of TOT can uh, ask for an advice and the advice uh, will give some information to users. So, uh, just uh, to list uh, information that uh, we provide, we provide a URL to PyPI. Uh, to the corresponding Python package uh, release, uh, so it's specific to version. So if you consume uh, Python packages, uh, the recommender system will point you directly to the release that uh, is installed and recommended. The other uh, information that we provide to users uh, is um, URL to GitHub repository. If uh, the system detected that a package is hosted on GitHub, then uh, it uh, provides a link, uh, directly a link to a GitHub repository. So uh, you can browse sources, you can browse content. And um, uh, also the system will uh, warn you if uh, a Python package is uh, uh, marked uh, or uh, the repository is archived. Uh, so uh, that's uh, another information uh, that is uh, stated to users. Then uh, when it comes to GitHub, we also link to GitHub release notes. So if the system detects that uh, the, there are release notes on GitHub for uh, a specific uh, Python release, uh, then uh, the system points you to these release notes so you can browse possibly backwards incompatible changes or what is new in the new release. Then uh, we uh, also detect uh, community on Stack Overflow. So uh, based on tags that are published uh, by Stack Overflow, we associate each tags with uh, Python packages. So uh, if you consume uh, Python packages that have uh, Stack Overflow community, the recommender system will point you to uh, the uh, stack uh, to the relevant Stack Overflow threads. Then we link also information to Libraries IO. That is a web page that accumulates some information about open source uh, projects and open source Python packages. So we provide a link to Libraries IO. We also provide a link to Pulp. Uh, that is, uh, let's say, secondary source of Python packages uh, that can be co that can be released by Red Hat teams. So uh, you can also uh, browse content on uh, Pulp. Uh, we also provide information whether a Python package is packaged as an RPM in distributions. So as of now, we provide this information for Federal Authority 4 and UBI 8. Additionally, we accumulated some uh, knowledge about uh, Python packages. Uh, more precisely, we accumulated, uh, for example, uh, issues uh, that are known. Uh, uh, so, a resolver adjusts the resolution, uh, resolution process uh, so that the resolved software stack does not uh, uh, 
is not resolved with, for example, bug, uh, buggy uh, release. An example can be uh, this uh, error. So uh, you can see YAML file, this is, these are the prescriptions. And here you can see uh, that uh, if Pillow is installed with NumPy, Pillow in some specific version, then uh, users get uh, some uh, errors. You can browse uh, upstream issue or upstream issue tracker uh, to get more information about uh, this. So you see there is a runtime uh, error and uh, the suggestion is to use a different uh, Python, uh, sorry, below release. So that's one type of uh, uh, guidance that we uh, give to, to users. Okay, so uh, now some of this information is derived from our main knowledge graph, but uh, we try to keep um, uh, the database open and that means we uh, created this declarative interface for the resolver in the form of YAML files that are uh, managed uh, so and released so the database of these uh, YAML files is uh, properly uh, versioned and released to deployments and uh, in that case the resolver automatically uh, consumes uh, consumes these so-called prescriptions and can uh, give uh, additional guidance to users or adjust the resolution process in a way uh, the resolved software stack is uh, uh, or the resolved software stack has high quality. So as of now we have something like something more than 5,500 YAML files of these prescriptions that is roughly 41 megabytes and uh, this database it, uh, can grow. We will be happy if it grows. And uh, if you have any issue in your application stack or you uh, know about some issues, uh, feel free to extend this database, feel free to contribute to this database. So uh, we provide a better Python ecosystem uh, and uh, better libraries to users. So uh, users uh, or developers do not have uh, headaches with uh, debugging uh, code and rather focus on delivering uh, uh, features and delivering applications. Okay, so uh, let's go to terminal and let's have a quick demo. So uh, here I'm having a, a very simple application, hello pi, and let's have a look at uh, dependencies uh, that uh, are used uh, in this application. So here you can see uh, direct dependencies of application and uh, let's go to tot so that tot uh, resolves uh, these dependencies and can give us uh, guidance. So if you are familiar with uh, tot, you already know that one of the integration points uh, of tot is a CLI tool that is called TAMOS, and uh, you can issue TAMOS advice. So in that case, the, uh, the uh, direct dependencies uh, together with some additional uh, information, such as information about runtime environment, Python interpreter version, operating system, base container image, but also static source code analysis of your application. Uh, this all is sent to uh, the backend. Uh, another uh, input is, for example, recommendation type that states your intention with the application. And uh, all this information is accumulated in the request and sent to the backend. The backend then uh, asynchronously resolves uh, your uh, software stack uh, based on the knowledge that uh, is uh, uh, provided. So as we've seen, uh, knowledge in these prescriptions, but also knowledge uh, about uh, dependency structures, uh, dependency structures, uh, structure, uh, or uh, other information that is stored in the main knowledge uh, database. Uh, once we uh, obtain results from the resolver, uh, we have two main parts. The first one is application stack guidance. Uh, that is guidance on uh, application stack and its uh, general uh, guidance uh, and also information about runtime environment and uh, things like that. So you see uh, that I'm not using TOTS S2I, that is the recommended uh, base container image uh, that uh, is analyzed uh, by TOT and can uh, give better uh, 
uh, and when this dot S2I is used, uh, users can get better recommendations. So uh, it's recommended to use dot uh, base container images. Then also some information about my configuration. So I did not configure, uh, for example, platform. So uh, there is implicitly supplied Linux. Uh, x86-64. Uh, then you can see also information about uh, prescription release. So uh, you know which database of known issues is used and uh, where this uh, database is hosted. Then information about missing uh, CPU model, CPU family in my configuration file. That means that, uh, for example, the recommender system is not uh, capable of giving me uh, uh, better guidance uh, when it comes to uh, performance, uh, when it comes to performance of, of my application stack. Then we see these uh, warnings uh, that are uh, saying that a package is removed from, from the resolution process. Uh, basically, it means uh, that uh, the system, based on the pre-aggregated uh, knowledge, based on pre-aggregated uh, knowledge from analyzers that are run on the background, spotted that uh, some packages failed to install into my runtime environment, into the environment that I'm using. So, for example, uh, that can be caused by a Python interpreter version that I'm using. Uh, uh, some packages are compatible just with uh, Python 2 and uh, they can cause uh, installation errors uh, installation errors uh, when uh, python 3 uh, is used and uh, similar uh, similar errors okay so uh, this is application stack guidance part uh, you can possibly spot uh, more things such as uh, rules so um, tot operator uh, or uh, the person that operates that can um, configure rules on on the backend, and these rules can uh, avoid resolution of some specific packages. So uh, here is a rule uh, that uh, avoids using uh, very old packages. Uh, so, for example, Beautiful Soap in version 4.3.0 was released before December 2016, and that is considered to be old release, so uh, users should not use it. Uh, or there is another reason uh, that uh, uh, TOT operator can state when configuring these uh, rules. Okay, so that was uh, the first part of uh, the resolved uh, or uh, of uh, the information uh, provided by the recommender system. And when we scroll down, this can be pretty verbose given uh, how uh, large your stack is and what packages you use. The second part of, um, of report that is uh, provided by the recommender system is the recommended stack report. In this case, uh, this report is specific to Python packages uh, that you consume. So you can see information uh, that I uh, noted earlier in the presentation. You can see information about, um, for example, a link to libraries IO. So I'm using ArcPars uh, package. So uh, uh, the recommender system points me to libraries IO, where information about ArcPars uh, can be uh, can be uh, seen. So uh, if you are interested in data that uh, uh, libraries IO accumulate, you can uh, browse that. Another link points me to uh, the specific release on PyPI. So uh, here you can see uh, ArcPars in version 1.3.0. Uh, that is the recommended uh, version uh, by the recommender system. So here you can browse uh, meta package metadata that uh, library maintainers provided or project readme uh, that was used when packaging uh, ArcPars and publish, uh, publishing it to uh, PyPI. Another information is derived from metadata from package uh, metadata. Uh, so in this case, uh, system extracts uh, some metadata from uh, Python packages. Uh, such metadata can be truth classifiers that are used in Python to classify packages. 
so in this case, uh, I'm using Python interpreter in version 3.6, but the system detected that uh, arc parse uh, that I'm using or that was recommended uh, was not uh, tested or uh, was not released uh, with uh, Python 3.6 in mind. So if we go to uh, pypi.org, we can see uh, some metadata that is associated with, with the package. And here you can see a list of Python interpreters and Python interpreter versions that were claimed to be compatible with uh, the, uh, the Arc, Park, uh, Arc Parse release. Okay. Uh, if you would like to know more about these truth classifiers, there are more recommendations that uh, the system can compute, uh, follow uh, a demo that is specific to, uh, to truth classifiers. Another uh, recommendation or another link is uh, warning me that uh, uh, the package that I'm consuming is uh, is archived on, on GitHub, so uh, it gives me a link to the repository uh, where uh, ArcParse uh, is hosted. And as you can see, uh, the repository is archived. Uh, that means you cannot open new issues, you cannot uh, open new pull requests, and that means uh, that development of the given package is dead. So you should consider uh, using uh, another package or another uh, project uh, with similar functionality um, because uh, this uh, package is no longer maintained and uh, has inactive community. Uh, another recommendation is pointing me to libraries IO specifically for Beautiful Soap 4, uh, also a version uh, uh, or release on PyPI. Uh, the system also detected that uh, Beautiful Soap 4 uh, has active community on uh, Stack Overflow. So it points me to uh, threads uh, that are specific to uh, Beautiful Soap. And uh, in that case, I can browse uh, knowledge uh, that was accumulated by uh, the community on Stack Overflow, or I can find issues uh, that are known in the community. Uh, again, uh, Beautiful Soap in that specific release has, uh, in, uh, does not have a Python 3.6 truth classifier. Then uh, another information is specific to pack another package that is Dask. Uh, moreover, the system points me to documentation of Dask. Uh, Dask uh, can uh, requires additional configuration uh, when using, so uh, system points me to uh, Document, uh, documentation, uh, how I should set up Dask and how I should use it. Then another package or another information is about decorator, so libraries IO, a link to PyPI, uh, but in this case uh, the system detected that uh, package decorator is also packaged as an RPM uh, in UBI 8 and I can find it as Python 3 decorator RPM. Similarly, for Network X, I receive uh, a link to libraries, IO, PyPI, uh, a link to uh, repository. The system detected that Network X is hosted on, on uh, GitHub, where I can find a community, where I can find sources. Uh, it also points me to documentation. Uh, it, uh, Network X has uh, active community on Stack Overflow, so I can browse, uh, browse uh, threads on Stack Overflow. Okay, so uh, this was regarding uh, this type of information. Uh, now I'm looking uh, into the log if uh, there is something more worth uh, stating. Uh, maybe, maybe release notes. So if you are consuming a Python package, uh, and you would like to know uh, what has changed across releases or uh, new features that are provided or release notes or, uh, in general, you would like to browse release notes in general, then the, uh, the system detects where uh, packages are hosted and uh, where these release notes uh, can be browsed. So for example, I can browse a SciPy release notes, uh, these release notes are specific to SciPy 1.5.2, and I can uh, see 
anything that uh, by, uh, package maintainers of SciPy uh, published uh, there. Okay, so uh, that was the demo. Uh, if you are more interested in Todd, feel free to visit us. We uh, uh, are a community uh, where you can find more information how to reach out to us, where you can find us in, uh, at toddstation.ninja. So feel free to go there. If you are more interested in prescriptions, um, you can find prescriptions in a GitHub repository that is called Prescriptions. There is also a separate demo uh, that browses the content of prescriptions. And if you would like to know more about prescriptions or write prescriptions, you can you can browse. Uh, uh, documentation of uh, these prescriptions. So here uh, you can find .station slash prescriptions repository. You can uh, browse uh, these uh, database. So the database was created out of uh, Python packages uh, that are pack packaged as RPMs in UBI 8 or Fedora 34. But also uh, this knowledge was accumulated uh, based on uh, Python packages that are um, uh, highest rated or most downloaded uh, from PyPI. So top, top 5,000 Python packages was used to accumulate this logic. So for example, you can browse, I don't know, uh, uh, packages that start with a TE and you can find uh, packages such as, uh, or prescriptions specific to, I don't know, TensorFlow package, uh, where you can find uh, release notes, link, and uh, other prescriptions, uh, in this case, for healing uh, dependencies. So uh, this way, I would like to thank you and see you next time.